All right, we're still talking track and field, and now we're following up on a story first reported during Tuesday's edition of The Zone, where the Jamaica Athletics Administrative Association announced the staging of a special men's 4x400 meter relay event in order to give the team a final chance at achieving a time which would qualify them for the Paris Olympic Games. The 4x4 team last attempted to qualify at the NACA New Life Invitational in the Bahamas, but their time of 2 minutes 59.75 seconds wasn't good enough to move them into a qualifying position. Now, during a wide-ranging interview with us on Tuesday, the outspoken veteran coach Stephen Francis of the MVP group blamed the local governing body for the current situation and called for the removal of members of various J3A's committees. These personnel, they keep making stupid decisions when it comes to seniors. For example, they're deciding that they, use, they are using current year times to select world rate teams. That is rubbish, unheard of. And only people who know nothing about senior athletics would ever even suggest that. Right? Because they know that in April nobody starts to run yet. Right? Nobody starts to, people are peaking for the summer. Right? And what you do more than anything in, in, uh, <clears throat> for the world release is to run the teams you expect to run down in June. You make them aware early enough that, look, we're going to select you, try and get in shape because we need to qualify. We need to get to the final. Right? But instead, what they do, they start picking teams based on who has run 46 and 45 and that kind of stuff. Right? And then again, they compound it by inviting college kids to run in Bahamas. Right? Now, what they should have done, if I had been there and they had asked me, I would say to, to them, look here, you paid Trinidad, Antigua, and St. Lucia to find four people. Right? You come to the trials and you have a four by four on the last day. What you, what you must do is shift the 400 so that the finals is on Saturday. But what these jokers have done, is that they have pushed the 400 finals down to Sunday. So there's no opportunity for them to have a proper 4x4 here with the people who have qualified based on the trials. Right? So I think it is, I mean, they need to get Mr. Riley, Mr. Wellington, all them people off the committee for seniors. Get people in there who, whose life is about senior athletics and know the sport. And then we'll have better, we will not have these problems. Mm. David Riley is deputy chairman of the J3A's Competitions Commission. He's all, he also has responsibility for junior development. And as you heard, he was one of the men singled out by Mr. Francis. David, welcome to the Sports Bank Zone. Oh, thanks for having me. <laughs> I'll give you the floor, first of all, to respond to the accusations made by Stephen Francis. Well, Stephen Francis is an ass, and everybody knows that except Stephen Francis. And his pronouncements continue to be um, contrary to what ought to be from somebody who's a member of an association. Stephen is a paid up member of the J3As. And if you have suggestions, you should make those suggestions known in an organization that you wish to have the organization perform at a certain level. Yeah. Um, Stephen has made some statements which are certainly erroneous. And he's called me out. He's called my name. He's called Mr. Wellington's name. And he has failed to... to call out his own brother's name, who serves on the same committee, suggesting that David Riley has more influence on the committee than, than, than Paul Francis, or even the, the technical leader of the senior program, Mr. Maurice Wilson, is absurd. Yeah. Maybe Stephen needs to, to volunteer some more on committees so that he understands how basic committees work. You could very well disagree with the decisions that are made by the committee. You made that known that you disagree. But you stand by the decisions that are made. And so he should make himself available to serve on the committees and stop tearing on persons who have given their time and their effort and are serving in a particular way. This idea that there's a senior committee is absurd as well. Mm. J3 has a single selection committee. And the selection committee selects teams, whether it be juniors or seniors. The, t the committee itself has skill sets that crosses all the disciplines. And so the committee meets 
and persons deliberate and make a statement and, and so on and discussions are made. Yeah, David, hold it right there. So we're going to have to take a quick break here on the Sports Mag Zone, but we'll pick up this issue right after this. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Sportsman Zone. We had a few technical issues in that last segment, but I think we are great and ready to go. Just a quick update. A news breaking a short while ago that the uh, disciplinary hearing, the case against the sprinter Taekwondo Tracy, it has been adjourned by the Jamaica Athletics Administrative Association's uh, disciplinary committee. Um, the chairman saying that it has been adjourned indefinitely. Um, that means that no date has been set for whether they will continue this case or not. So that is the latest coming out of that. The case has not been dropped, at least not yet. We understand that the legal team of uh, Mr. Tracy will appeal this hearing um, because they think that the matter should be adjourned without prejudice. So we'll get more details on that, of course, in subsequent shows. But we have with us live on set David Riley. And of course, before the break, he was responsible responding to comments made by Stephen Francis, the world-renowned track and field coach, and he made those comments on Tuesday, blaming the Jamaica Athletics Administrative Association for the failure so far of the 4x400 team to qualify for the Paris Olympic Games. And of course, he singled out Mr. David Riley along with Keith Wellington as, I guess, problematic individuals within the organization. And Mr. Riley, before the break, was explaining to us why that is not the case, David. Definitely. I mean, the committee works. The committee comprises of several persons with different skill sets, and they meet to select teams, whether the teams be junior or senior. Um, this uh, this um, statement about not understanding senior athletics is rubbish. Um, Stephen needs to understand certain things as well. You need to know how to function within an organization, an association that you're a member. And the issues arose because there, when, when you have a team where there's no selection trials or competition for, then the procedure for selecting persons has to be based on the current state of fitness. The beauty about track and field is that we can actually determine who's better based on their fitness. That's why we race them. That's why you line them up. It's not like some of the team sports where you don't really know, you can't really determine who's better. But if you're sending a team to World Relays, you can determine who's in best shape. And I think to suggest that the committee should do otherwise is, is absurd. Why should you pick somebody who, is, who has a long resume but has no current fitness? You want to send the best team? Send the best team. And then the statement about not knowing that the World Relays was the qualifying for the Olympics is also irresponsible. Um, the, but it wasn't Mr. Francis who made that comment, though. Well, maybe not in, in this case, but to suggest that you, you weren't aware of the, the qualification and the seriousness of it and that, in fact, you know, it should have been highlighted is, is, a, bit, is a bit disingenuous. You are a professional. You're, you're raising issues about the professionalism of the association. You have access to the qualification standards. Nobody told you what the qualification standard is for the 100-meter men or the 400-meter men. You, you, you know. It's on the same document. It's a two-page document. Yeah. The first page has a qualifying standard. The second page has a qualification for the relays. So it could be interpreted that you had no interest in what was on page two. Yeah. And what's on page two is the, is the relays. Yeah, so let's get an idea of what is in place as far as the selection committee is concerned, because you just pointed out that there is no such thing as a senior committee. Right. And what you have in place is a selection committee. Yes. Who makes up this selection committee? Well, I can't disclose the, 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 the composition of the selection committee. But shouldn't this be public knowledge, though, well, David? You'll have to direct that to the J3, but as long as I have... I'm, I sit on the the committee because I have direct responsibility for the under-20 program. So the technical leader for under-20 sits on the committee, the technical leader for the senior program sits on the committee, and there are other members of the committee. So how big is the committee? The, yes. How big is the committee? Since eight people, ten people? 
Five? Maybe 10, maybe 10. So, so, so let me ask you this, David. So I understand that the chairman of that committee um, is, why is this, Lincoln Eatman. Right. Um, you're on that committee. Yes. Mr. Keith Wellington is on that committee. I understand that Mr. Maurice Wilson is on that committee. I also understand that Mr. Glenn Mills is on that committee. Not currently. Not currently. Right. So he's, he's no served, longer on the committee. Right. He's served on that committee up to last year. Up to last year. Michael Freighter, is he on that committee? Yes, he is. Paul Francis mm -hmm. from the MVP group, mm -hmm. is he on that committee? Yeah. Did I leave out anyone who is on that selection yeah, committee? Yeah, there are other persons on the committee, but uh, you know, the, the point is, why would he single me out when Paul is on the committee? So, All the information, there's, to suggest that, that I have more influence than Paul Francis is, is crazy. Mm -hmm. if, if, if you have a committee and discussions are being made, and persons are, are involved and, and engaged in the conversation, whatever decisions are made, everyone at the committee has to take responsibility. Yeah, to, to a viewer watching, it, 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 you could have digested what he was saying when he singled yourself and uh, Wellington out, that primarily you, you are junior athletes associated. I'm just saying that listening to him without the, the knowledge of the fullness of the committee, um, he, he called two names that the public would view generally as, as, as people who are focused more on junior, junior sport. Well, I choose to coach at this level for yes. a particular reason. I am a level five certified coach in sprints and hurdles. I have an academy certification from World Athletics and I got a distinction in that class. Stephen Francis can't school me about training theory. I also finished at the top of the class, so the level two world athletics course for jumps. And I was also um, the first local coach to have developed an, an, a long jumper locally and have him qualified for the world championships long before Tajay Gay. His name is Ramon Bailey. He, that was done locally. So and that's at the senior level. And that's at Just the senior level. He went the to the world championships yeah. 2017. Yeah. I choose to coach at this level, not because I cannot coach at any other level. That's what I choose to do. Just like any, any um, professional in the high school system choose to teach at the high school rather than going to college. People have PhDs in, in the high school system. So, I mean, that is, that is crazy to be signaling out persons and think that technically you are not capable is, is crazy. Stephen needs to answer why his athlete who led off the relay team gave us a 47 split. Maybe he should say that I should have provided the Excelsior athletes who, I could give him three athletes who could run faster than that. But that is crazy. Yeah. You are responsible for the athletes in the preparation, prepare athletes for national duties. W were you in the Bahamas, David? No, I was not. What happened with Rasheed McDonald? I don't because know. you just referenced this 47 split, right. and I feel the door is now open to go there. I, I don't know. I've not seen the report. The reports wouldn't come to me. I don't, I don't know what the situation is. So, so here is one of the things that struck me. Because, and, and I, I'll tell you what my thought process is on, on the matter specific to what happened in the Bahamas. I have said to a lot of individuals, David and Lance, that I feel that it was a series of unfortunate situations that led to the non-qualification of the men's 4x4 team in the Bahamas. Originally, Sean Bailey had been named to the mm -hmm. team. He did not turn up in the Bahamas. Um, Rasheen McDonald was named to the team. He looked like an injured man running to me. Um, Kareem Bartley was another one who was there. He didn't compete any at all. After the mixed 4x4 did not qualify on day number one, then I suspect Zandrian Barnes was um, shifted to the mixed 4x4 to help that team qualify, which is what happened. And so it seemed to me that Jamaica almost didn't have a team to put out on the second day of men's 4x4. Mm -hmm. And what looked to me like an injured Rasheen McDonald still ran the opening leg and hence the 47 split. At what stage, David, did the team there know that he was injured or that he had a problem? I, I don't have that information, but what I do know is that um, a possible replacement would have been Rashawn Clark. Rashawn Clark was not available. Um, Rashawn Clark was not available because his, his agents and coaches felt that he should not run. 
So, I mean, that is another issue. Did he run the mixed? Yes, he ran the mixed. Mm. But he was unavailable for the 4x4. Mm. Uh, and, this, uh, and when you say unavailable for the 4x4, meaning at all during right, the championship or because he, he ran the multiple, mix, they didn't right. want him to do multiple right. events. Right. Mm. It, it, <laughs> Here's my question to you. Back to the, the whole Stephen Francis issue. Could it be that Stephen Francis singled out yourself and Mr. Wellington because he feels that more than the other members of the committee, you are closer to the president and maybe the closest advisors to the president? I don't know of that. I provide technical assistance and support to the association on several levels. Um, I am very thorough in the way I do my job. And I consider data, and I use data to be informed. I'm not frivolous in my decisions or in the suggestions that I make. They're usually very sound and, and very thoughtful. And I have quite a bit of experience outside of track and field. I have an analytical uh, background. I have two engineering degrees, and I know how to solve problems. And so for him to be, be suggesting that we are incapable of assisting the association in making decisions and in the discussions that lead to the decisions re regarding teams. And, and mind you, you know, Ricardo and Lance, when you have, for example, having the trials coming up, the championships, yes. the selection criteria is clear. There's no, there's no issue in terms of who gets to be selected. Well, I have my own issues. Yeah, I know on you that have part, your issues, but, but <laughs> it's it's clearer than it is for a world release or a world indoor, Fair. where where you have to rely on the availability of athletes. Yeah. You you cannot. J3 owns no athlete, has no athletes of its own, yeah. and the coaches who have the athletes and are preparing them for whatever event, you make the athletes available, and in many cases. The athletes, especially in this particular situation with the release, the athletes wanted to go, but the coaches were saying no. Mm. In many other cases. Mm. And unfortunately, the J3 doesn't want to release that information and to make the public aware that the athletes wanted to go, but the coaches themselves did not want the athletes to go. Athletes were withdrawn at the last minute, mm. even after the entry was closed and no other changes could be made. Mm. Which I suspect is probably why certain athletes didn't turn up in the Bahamas any at all. Um, when you heard the criticism from Stephen Francis, did it surprise you? It surprised me. It surprised me because I have no runnings with Stephen Francis. I mean, maybe um, because I have not accepted any any offers to coach at Wilmers anymore. I don't know if it's coming from that. <laughs> um, I, I don't know where it's coming from. But I, I, I was a bit surprised by that. And, and I find it a little disingenuous in, in, in that you have athletes that you need to, to provide to the national program, and you clearly have an issue with, with, with your, your own knowledge about injury prevention because most of your athletes are injured and banged up. Mm -hmm. I mean, why are athletes so injured? You need to, to, to understand the, the proper loading and there's stuff that you need to understand. You're, you're there talking about what people don't understand, don't know, and, and be. You, you clearly have gaps in your own knowledge. Mm -hmm. You clearly don't know how to double peak either because you have an issue with the world release. Bring that up with the world athletics. Tell them why they're having this stupid meet in the middle of May. The meet is there. Mm -hmm. You can learn how to double peak your athletes from, from May, and then you bring them back for whatever meet later on in the season. That is the job of a coach. Mm -hmm. David, David, globally, Stephen Francis has been labeled the world's best sprinting coach. Now, you have said a few things in the past minute that appear to challenge that. I am not challenging his record. I'm challenging the fact that he continues to, to, to parade himself as knowing all things. And that is not so. That is not so. He is clearly lack When you have so many athletes injured, and injured, seriously injured, season over season, there is a problem. There is a problem. It, in, <laughs> I, I don't want to get into that, David, but here's what I want to look at. I want to look at the policy um, that guided the selection of the World Relays team, um, and specifically the first, um, I, I guess, rule as part of that policy. And I think we have that graphic. So. 
If I could get that graphic, please, because I think um, that is so important to guide the remainder of this conversation. So the selection criteria for the world relays, the J3A selection criteria for the world relays. And the, here it is. So athletes must have registered a performance in a competition since January 1, 2024, while personal bests may be considered athletes with better seasons bests will get greater consideration for selection no that's fair you're saying it's that's fair. fair because so, so let me ask you david if shelly and fraser price mm -hmm. elaine thompson hero sharika jackson oblique seville decided they wanted to open their seasons at the world release, which means they would not have a time in the build-up to that. This rule is suggesting there's no guarantee that the selection committee would have them as part of their team. Well, and it said maybe given greater consideration. That's what it said. But it says you must register a time. That, that's right. the part of the rule that says yeah. you must register a well, time maybe you can bring up the last paragraph of that very same same document mm -hmm. because it actually does explain another part of the the whole process mm -hmm. um you, you see, which says if the, the thing is ricardo athletes train yes athletes have breakout seasons yes you can have an athlete that's emerging this season and their training is so organized and they're making progress but, but, and but, that athlete would be the one that is showing greater form. But hold on, David. But why isn't the breakout athlete selected as a complement to your proven athletes? But track and field is not about your resume. Track and field is about what you can do today. What you can do today. You can't go but, to the start but, but line is, and but say, isn't I'm that... the Olympic champion, so I'm going to just give me the medal right but, now. But you hold can't on, do David. That. Isn't that potentially problematic, though, for athletes who are established and maybe this is what Stephen Francis is getting at because established athletes don't need to come out in January and February and March or even April because they have their um, schedule set they don't need to necessarily run fast in those months because they already have their meets booked right but um, that's hypothetical in this case before you got to that selection committee athletes were asked Coaches were asked, are you available? Yes. So though, you're assuming that those athletes had indicated that they were available, and they did not indicate that they were available. And by the way, I was just using right. those athletes as examples. Right. So I'm none not of those suggesting... athletes, except for maybe Sharika Jackson, was available. Mm. So you are saying, despite the fact that the rule says that you must have a time in the year that the team is being selected for, there would be great consideration. Or if you're senior super athletes um, wanted to open at the world relays that they would be selected. Right. The, the, the thing is, that document that you just showed is an internal document. That wasn't circulated. So Frana would not have had any access to that information. That is internal that was guiding the selection committee. So it's not as though persons would say, well, I didn't have any time this season, so I'm disqualified. That, is not, that was not something that was out there in the public domain yes. for them to, to then but, be... But David, isn't that a problem? Why isn't the policy out there in the public domain for all the athletes and the coaches to have access to it? Because, in fact, they were asked if they were available. Indicate whether you want to go to the World Relays. And if you heard some of the responses, persons were not available. They were not interested in the World Relays. They're not interested in relays any at all. So it, we're starting from a position where most of the athletes are just not interested and not available to run at the world release. But that shouldn't stop the association, though, David, from making policies like this public so everybody knows what needs to be done. Um, so I take your point. I take your point. But that's, of course, you know, above my pay grade. <laughs> Lance Whitaker, it's above David's pay grade. Yeah. <laughs> I hear you. This is problematic, um, David, yeah. because you would have seen the public response to how disappointed Jamaican fans right. were about the, the relay effort because the general feeling is that Jamaica is a brand in track and right. field and what was on display at the World Relays in the Bahamas did not display 
what Jamaica wants as its brand, as a global powerhouse in, in track and field. So people were very embarrassed by that. Um, I understand the point that you are making, that there are some decisions or some guidelines that would have to be addressed by the J3As. You're just on a, on a selection committee. But I, I would suggest that this has to be taken seriously by the governing body of track and field because, and not for the first time, we've seen Stephen Francis being combative with the J3As and critical of how they make decisions and so on. But a lot of people have been, have been grateful for the impact that a Stephen Francis and the MVP and racers with Glenn Mills that those bodies have had on the impact of Jamaica's track and field globally. And it is disappointing that there is this conflict and even acrimony between these top coaches and the J3As because I would suggest that there needs to be more harmony in, I, I in, in, in moving you. the process forward. I agree with you. And, and all of this is unnecessary because it's not as though you you are blocked and you have no access and you have no way of, of making your suggestions known. Um, but again, the J3 cannot compel athletes to participate. Um, you, you have to make yourself available and the coaches who are guiding the athletes and who are preparing the athletes should prepare the athletes that whenever the nation needs them, they're available. Yeah, David, by the way, Stephen Francis did say that he doesn't think um, that he thinks that we can still salvage the men's 4x4. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything you can tell us about where the process is at? I know there was a meeting last night um, of the J3As with coaches. Um, can I tell you guys a quick story? <laughs> I, I, have a, I have a friend. He lives in Canada, um, not involved in track and field, but somehow the Zoom information got out and he got into the meeting and he messaged me and said, I got into the meeting and they kicked me out before it was done, but they have a great plan. <laughs> David, what's the plan? <laughs> well, I mean, the, 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 fortunately, the J3 is a dynamic organization. The people there are actually track and field people who love the sport and they are actually working. Yeah. And so um, very quickly when the situation arose, they had the meeting. I mean, I wasn't at the meeting. Okay. Um, but what I understand is that um, the, they will be running the 4x4 on Saturday night. On Saturday night? Sunday night. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday night. night. Yeah. Um, the prelims for the 400-meter uh, men yeah. have been shifted to Thursday. Uh, the semifinals on Friday and the, final, and the finals on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, with the top 16 athletes... Um, from the 400 not required to run the preliminary round. Okay. So they'll just run the semifinals and the finals, and then they'll be running the 4x4. Four four. Yeah. All right. I also understand that there is another meeting on Friday. Friday. Um, which, yeah, so just to finalize everything mm. that David just said and mm. come to a final decision. Mm. David, so, 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 Ricardo, your yeah. friend in Canada is a hacker? <laughs> <laughs> How did he get into the Zoom meeting? So apparently somebody posted on Twitter all the Zoom information. Oh boy. I, I don't know how that mm. happened. Um, mm. But the other point to be made here is that... Ricardo, were you this in the is meeting? A, no, I wasn't. <laughs> this, this is of international significance. Um, this is no longer just a national event. Yeah. This is now an international event. And so everyone is looking on to see what will happen. We, we have to break. David Riley, thanks very much for being as candid as you can. Um, we appreciate it. We appreciate you coming on. Yeah? Let's take a break on the Sports Max Zone. We'll be back with more.